Hey ladies and gents, Spazzy Dragon here, aka Syndromes. It's not even been so long, but welcome back to Meet a Faction. Today with me, I have the Xeno Alliance, and with Xeno Alliance with me today, I have Reeves. Say hello, Mr. Reeves. Oh, it's good to see you. Y y yes. We are enjoying this peaceful cinematic take of Colorado. And uh, we are going to start off with Reeves himself. So tell me how you got into Disco. Because I, as far as I understand, you are a well, relatively new player. You haven't spent a decade here. Uh, that's more or less true. So I joined the community basically back in 2016. I think if I'm being nitpicky and looking at a calendar, it was April 2016. I've marked down the date to keep track of my PTSD induced from discovery. Uh, Beautiful. Uh, so no, I'm not by any means a bitter vet, and I don't get to sit in the exclusive club. So I've had the benefit, I believe, or at least I would think I've had the benefit of being able to see things from both the side of somebody who has just been a community member for the longest time, and then also transitioning into being staff. So I've been able to see both facets of how this server operates, which does give me some insight to understanding the way things work. I, ironically enough, mostly played lawful factions for the, you know, like the longest time I was on the server. So I, the fact I ended up with the Xenos, like a quintessential terrorist faction at the end of it all is kind of ironic, if we're being completely honest. I had no intention of doing this either. It just—it was one of those things that when it happens, you know it fits and you go with it. To be fair, the exact same thing happened to me. All because I wanted to mount Vengeances on a spatial, and then Jaihan Joe kicked me out of liberty for it. <laughs> yeah, one thing leads to another. In this case, I met Evo. Uh, Evo, uh, I can't remember what the other part of his name was. I, just, I remember he's called Evo. And he was the leader of this faction for me. And I met him on an independent pirate. And we had this back and forth discussion and wound up getting engaged by some uh, LPI ships. I helped them fight them off because they engaged me too and I had right of self-defense. And after we had defeated them, he posited my character a little offer. Which was that he could quit being a you know, the disgruntled Nobody. highwayman, yeah, <laughs> and actually join the faction. And I kind of developed this whole character that I have now around that single encounter over the years that I've been I here. love when that happens. Like, when you start off a character, when you, when you make yourself a character that was completely unrelated to something, and it just naturally progresses, that is a big freaking kudos. I was happy with it myself, so that's pretty much me. There's really not much to say. I have immense controversy, depending on who you ask. I'm either a, a nice person that has done right so far as leading the faction goes, or I'm the devil. So you can take which one you want, but at least it's not ambivalence. That would be less than entertaining. Yep. Also, a small shout out to Princess, <laughs> who, who just went poof. Poof. All right. So, um, as per usual, tell us about a little bit about the Xenos as they were portrayed in the vanilla game, and how are they different from the Xenos of the Discovery server? And as an added bonus, because this is something that I am currently learning, because I I have not been keeping up to date. How is that different from Xenos of like? right now, because apparently things have changed a lot. Uh, this is actually a fun question. The thing with the Xenos and Freelancer is actually a huge misconception with, uh, and I'll get into this later, because it's actually rage-inducing what happened. Now, the Xenos and Freelancer take a very simple premise, which is that you combine generational humiliation with essentially indentured servitude and what do you get? You get a powder keg of an isolated subsection to society that hates your guts and doesn't really even see you as their countrymen anymore. That's the premise of the Xenos. Their name is actually not something they gave themselves. Like, if you read the news pieces that are available in the source material, it will tell you that 
it's liberty that actually names yeah. them it's the navy they term them as being disaffected xenophobes like it's just a catch-all term that makes it easy to bundle these people who are basically just criminals I am almost 99% sure that that is the twist that we actually went for the Liberty Rose as the uh, explanation for it, because, like, it, it was just the news out that's going out, oh, these are just rogues, you know? It's like These roguish individuals. Yeah, yeah, it's a name that the media gives you, and to, like, mock the fact that the media that is sticks. essentially smearing you, you adopt it. It's like, yeah, so what? Like, you, you gave me a call sign. I, I Like, you are advertising for me. I'm a brand now. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. Liberty and never changed. Liberty is... It's amazing, because Liberty has so much in common with the outcasts to a certain degree, at least in Discovery, uh, with the whole slavery thing. Uh, if you get sent to Huntsville, or Sugarland, whichever, oh, yeah. you're going to have, depending on which prison, of course, quite the sentence levied. In the case of Sugarland, of course, it's an NCR offense, so like no chance for rehabilitation, you're probably going to die there. But with Huntsville, it's indentured servitude. They will lock up anyone and everyone that can be charged with anything. So, you know, criminal yeah. trespassing or whatever. And they'll have you make consumer goods. Yes. That's another way that this faction has sort of had its population put through a blender and then created on the other side of it. The way this translates in, translated into Discovery is actually kind of a mess because for whatever reason, well, I guess at the time it was fun, people decided that they were going to play the Xenos, who are a group of people who originally all lived on Denver, that planet behind us there, into Texans, like your typical southerner, redneck, yes. shoot the my gun, the toot my was... horn, I voted for Trump, I promise, that sort of thing. Uh, and I guess it was fun for a time because it was like a satire and a commentary of how ignorant these people can seem, even if they have good intentions. But then it just dragged on and it became one of those jokes that you've heard one too many times. Yeah. And once Evo had tried, I think for the either the second or the third time, to muster the faction under his leadership and failed, not exactly his fault, it was just, you know, the bad direction it felt to me like organically i asked him if i could take a shot at it and see what i could do with it and when i took hold of the faction it was basically just me like that was it it was one person at most if i was lucky i would get a second or a third in space at the same time but this is the part i was talking about initially which is the rage inducing bit I started reading whatever I could get on the Xenos because I wanted to understand the faction better for myself so I could make the character fit it when I was constructing his background. Yeah. And I discovered a lot of discrepancies between what the source material would tell you and what Discovery would tell you. Like you would look at a rumor and they would just not match. There would be a line that was removed, a line that was added, or the entire thing would be rewritten. But the entry was the same. Interesting, it, interestingly enough, one of the definitive things that I found is that the Xenos have a game plan of sorts. So they're tired That's of getting pushed around by everyone. And they've decided that the best way to get themselves back on top of society is if they essentially leverage themselves back there and fight. They've determined that everyone who is wealthy on Manhattan is probably an addict and dependent on cardamine. So what's the best way to get their money? To control the flow of cardamine. Which is why they're, you know, in conflict with the rogues, the lane hackers, and the outcasts. It's, it's just inevitable. It's also why the they're junkers. in conflict with the junkers, because they're the current distributor. I do that... not remember the exact, um, like, what how this became uh, as a thing that I talked about, but the fact that how Xenos are actually looking at, say, Junkers and Coalition as, um, you know, as a sort of monopoly that needs to be dismantled, it was a topic that I talked to with Impy about back when he led the Junker Congress, and I think this kind of puts it in the context for me personally, because I always thought about, like, obviously the whole yeehaw yell thing was not supposed to be 
you know, like, 100% top-tier roleplay, and it came from a time where roleplay in general on Disco was a little bit more lax, and people could yeah. do stupid things. So, for example, you also had the Phantoms that are basically, you know... They were an admin faction. Yeah, they were an admin faction, essentially. It's like, and uh, the whole Yeehaw thing, it, it did make me really wonder how it actually, you know actually would be portrayed in game by enough for another faction but the but the yeehaw thing is you already said it was so freaking fun that no one really trying to so i'm glad that you did so you know go on yeah so the whole reason the xenos do want to take control of cardamine is twofold very simple one is they've realized they can't actually really do much if they don't have the finances to back up their equipment and upgrade their fleet and two is that once they have upgraded their fleet and, you know, secured any other interests they may have, they're going to wage a revolution. Those are their words, not mine. Uh, they're going to wage a revolution that sets the liberty working man free. Then you can read more into this. And one of the things I found is that Freelancer was populated by exactly two separatist factions. You had no other separatist factions in the game. And yeah. by separatist, I do literally mean that these factions wanted to break off and make their own countries. Yeah. That it's a very lofty thing to do, but the only other faction in the game I could think of that wanted to do this was the Mollies. And yeah. the Xenos had a more abstract view of it. Like with the Mollies, you could tell they wanted to free Dublin and they wanted to break off Bretonia because of historical grievances with BMM. But the Xenos, they tell you that Hudson is going to be part of something they call the Liberty Free Republic. They name drop the thing, which was of course edited in the actual rumor and covered up. For some reason, I can't discern why I had to restore the original at some point. And it's going to be in Hudson. They don't really give you any details beyond that. But that's them in a nutshell. And what I've done with the faction is simply take all the source material and re-implement it, overriding everything Discovery did. And in many cases, this was, this was like to the chagrin of veteran members who liked what they had built. They didn't like seeing it washed away, replaced by something they didn't necessarily have the most enthusiasm for, which I can understand to a certain degree. You play the faction in one way, it somehow becomes kind of headcanon to you, so seeing it's somewhat... Yeah kind of just reset it to factory defaults <laughs> might be a little it's bit like your jarring. phone somebody's taking your phone and reset it as a prank or in this case i guess creative expression and it's not the nicest thing is now your folder with 5000 cat pictures is gone your your cell phone has been detexified all right mhm mm so how did this actually translate into the gameplay like, uh, what is the current status of the Xenos in terms of diplomacy? Like, how does this work? Because when I commented it a moment ago before we started recording this, I said, oh, wow, the Xenos yeah. actually have their own ship line. Oh, look, there's the uh -huh. prosecutor. That still exists. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, we are hostile with these people. <laughs> I was like, what? Yep. <laughs> so please so, tell us, what happened there? It's, uh, like, it was fairly evident back in the day that the Hellfire Legion, which is what it was called regrettably, it's like the world's worst name at this point. In hindsight, I really don't know why they called it that. Uh, and the Xenos were allies for the longest time, since I can remember. And I was the one to break it. And I broke it in character for a multitude of reasons. Ambition, greed, and power were some of the highest ranking ones. Like, the Legion as an entity was so big and overarching that it could essentially dictate what the Xenos did and how they did it. And if you're a budding demagogue that wants to fan the flames of people's hatred and get them to do what you want you to can't secure be a lackey. your ends, yeah, you can't be a lackey. You can't be second fiddle to someone else's regime. So they had to go. Long story short, this effort succeeds. The Xenos flip hostile to the Legion, and the Legion goes its own way. The Legion and the Separatists, which were a... I don't know if you were here for this, but they were a faction consolidated bearing made out of Liberty Navy personnel that became disillusioned after a brief civil war in Alaska. As fun as I that was there in Alaska. I I was one yeah. of the people so, who fired the first shot. 
<laughs> I still <laughs> so have a merged. video there somewhere. So they merged the two factions together. And the Xenos were kind of neutral to the Separatists. Like, we had flip-flopped a few times, went from neutral to hostile, back to neutral a couple of times. But we had settled on neutral and were cooperating to the extent that they were allowed to dock on our bases. When they were merged into the Hellfire Legion, of course, to form the Insurgency, a far less silly name, they defaulted back to hostile. And that was because the Separatists had unwittingly inherited all the things that the Xenos now hated about the Legion and the Commonwealth, which was its government, allegedly. They had a massive population of immigrants, which the Xenos, as we know, don't like because immigrants are a sign of foreign influence. Common misconception is that the Xenos view of immigrants makes them racist. I don't think that's necessarily true because it's not that they hate them for their ethnicity, it's that they feel like inevitably these people are going to be agents of a foreign state, one way or another. This is probably paranoia, and knowing the way my character functions, it's you know social programming at this point. You tell I mean, that's people a good this thing. is the flawed, truth. Flawed views are perfectly cromulent in the roleplay environments. Exactly. And since I'm playing a demagogue, one of the things he does do is he convinces people this is the case. It's like, look, the houses are all vindictive, decrepit, and corrupt. If you let them get so much as a foothold in, they're going to suddenly start dictating how you do things and what you're going to do. And that's ultimately what he believes and convinces other people to believe has solid liberties pride as a nation and has ruined his own life being a complicated person himself, of course. Yep. The diplomacy of the faction hasn't changed much beyond that with, you know, the severance of the HF alliance. Uh, we're still neutral to the zoners. That's a long-standing trend. Oh, yeah. We're cooperative with the Order. That's sort of a new thing, but it's not really surprising when you consider the Order is kind of cooperative with anyone who doesn't necessarily hug the nomads. Exactly. Like, they're... They, they're kind of like the big spooky teddy bear because as long as you align with their interests and in not getting nomaded, then Pretty you much. can be very friendly with them. But tell me, how exactly did you become hostile to the Legion? Like uh, the current, it, it was it just them becoming, as you quoted, the embodiment of the Commonwealth, or was that the first, so like when they first assembled into the Legion? But when you flipped um, the alliance on its head, instead of, like you said, you, you use the term, you know, went your own separate ways. But how yeah. did it become hostile instead of just, you know, neutral and ignore each other, basically? So what started hammering a divide into the closely knit friendship was when my character took control of the faction. Like, the background to this is that he was elected to serve as commander, which is just a generic term to say he represents you and organizes the ships in combat. He decided to do two things. One is he wanted to pursue the original goal, which was to take over Cardamine and use that as financing. But he couldn't do this with the Legion keeping vigil over things. They would say, no, this is morally bankrupt. You're no better than the outcasts, this, that, whatever. And then they'd gaslight his supporters into supporting them instead. So he was clever enough to realize, you know what? I need to smokescreen this make it completely opaque and impossible to tell what I'm actually doing. So his cover story initially was that he was stealing Cardamine from the outcasts to essentially ease the suffering of people who were addicted and on Pittsburgh. Yeah, because now, you cannot treat. Well, it technically. was half true because technically he did do this. It's just that he didn't do it for very long. It was a photo op kind of thing. The moment he felt he no longer had to keep doing it, he absolutely stopped doing it. Those people died. They're canonically dead at this point. And I don't think he's lost any sleep over it. The second thing was that, of course, the Xenos wanted to form their own state. Now, it's kind of hard to do this when the Commonwealth existed and occupied pretty much the exact niche your political ideology intends to occupy. So whether or not he felt the Legion was useful, the Commonwealth as an entity was a roadblock. 
and it had to get moved out of the way. It was just immovable object needs unstoppable force and it ended in the worst way possible which was the severance of the alliance. Now the hostility itself broke out towards the beginning of something in game that's called the scouring of Bering which was in the Liberty Navy marched into Bering the same way it marched into Hudson so many years before that and started killing off any pirates, uh, criminals, whatever else might have been there. This is what forced the Separatists to merge into the Legion. While this was happening, the Xenos had given the Separatists the assurance that when the scouring happened, they would help the Separatists evacuate. I think by this point you can tell uh, the commander is not a nice person, so he, while he had said this, <laughs> he didn't follow through, and they were ultimately left to escort themselves out of Bering, which costed many, many, many lives, including command staff. And that was the intention. He wanted to make them think they were going to have more help than they did. Following which, the Xenos launched two offensives. One was on Hesperia, which was the Legion base in California, which was completely understaffed because they had sent everything to reinforce the Separatists, and he knew this. So he had one group march there, and essentially kicked the occupants out the airlock. And the second thing was Rochester base, which was disabled as a consequence of the assault for months. And it's been dubbed the sacking of Rochester since that point. But that's the clear line where you can say, yeah, this is where hostility started. It was the Battle of Hesperia, which was a decisive Xeno victory because they exploited the circumstances to its fullest and attacked it when it was understaffed and really couldn't fight back. And rather than keeping it, it's been turned into a free port of sorts, but of course the Xenos exercise a healthy degree of control over how it's managed. Yeah. You know, I'm listening to this, the scouring of Rochester, and it's that Liberty Rogue part of me that thinks, you know what? Fuck you, Junkers. That's <laughs> that's that, that's what you get for having the better place to sell Cardamine from, and getting us mm. to, like, ferry from Alcatraz to Rochester and not distributing from Rochester, uh, like, from Alcatraz. Because Alcatraz used to be the big, you know, the, the unlawful freeport sort of thing that we were trying to do. And it's like, I'm, I, I'm, I'm kind of wondering, it's completely off off tangent but like i'm kind of wondering how the rogues would feel about this in roleplay but, let me tell yeah. you because this is really interesting uh just a side note i'm not going to put this on the clock or anything because yeah. I, it's just funny so most people would think that the xenos disabling rochester is like completely detrimental to gameplay i don't i believe this is the furthest you can get from the truth of what that circumstance was the forums were a wash with roleplay which was commenting on it like people had to react to this it was a really yeah, it was thing. a big deal like freaking rochester disabled holy you had the outcasts like banging their table because money has stopped flowing this is a huge deal for like the plantation owners who are now just sitting there twiddling their thumbs with stocks going bad and nobody's giving them any answers when they turn to the rogues who are intended to be like the guard dogs of this trade route they're like wasn't my fault yeah, it's, 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 it's on the opposite side of freaking Liberty. What do you want from me? <laughs> so it was very interesting how the Xenos achieving this victory actually highlighted the relationship between these factions, which is far from perfect. Oh, and yeah. you get to actually see the Orange Highway and the, the Cardamine distribution network and the cracks within it. Like the outcasts obviously can't police the network themselves. They're too far away and spread too thin. The rogues were simply, well, as a consequence of bad management, not present in sufficient numbers to do anything about the assault. That sounds and like the, junkers, the rogues all right. <laughs> yeah, and the junkers are not the best fighters in the sector. So it ended in the worst possible way, which was Rochester was offline for, I want to say, half a year. So that's a lot of money that went down the toilet, and it has never recovered. It put the Xenos on the map, and it made everyone else kind of look at each other and be like, this can never Squint. happen again. <laughs> like, it can never happen again. If this happens again, the deal is off. So that that's basically what the rogues thought about it. And the rogues were, of course, treated as the, the sacrificial lamb. The junkers were like, yeah, yeah, they didn't defend it well enough. So they got pissed off with this for the longest time. 
That sounds about right. Yeah. So, a quick question. You know, when we usually thought about Xenos, at least back in the days that I played a lot, Xenos mm -hmm. were much more terrifying... Xenos, uh, like the Xeno Alliance, usually had very good PvP pilots, uh, who, as far as I remember, did migrate to uh, the Hellfire Legion at some point, I think. Yeah. But before that, uh, like outside of amazing fights next to Manhattan, you also had mm -hmm. the interactions with traitors, and they were brutal in a way that almost no other ID except for something like a Nomad ID, right? Yeah. That they posed a, a threat to players and, uh, you know, players' income. So how <laughs> has that changed? Because it was it was populated back, it was popularized, sorry, back in the day by the Xeno Alliance of the Yeehaw times that basically it was normal to not poke your corporate transports, which, by the way, that you explain their lore does not really make sense. But mm -hmm. at the same time, because this is not a working man sitting behind a truck, this is dude piloting with a sevenfold reinsured, like, billion corporate money, like, uh, yeah, it's like Metaverse. Tom Hanks from that one movie, what's it called? I'm the captain now, that thing, I can't remember the name. Yeah, and basically, how has that changed? Because, for example, we you, I, I used to play a Xeno back in the day. We were encouraged not to touch freelancers exporting mm -hmm. things to things. Importing things was free game. Like, if you see someone importing consumer goods such as rice from Kasari, you burn that stuff instantly. Um, mm -hmm. Which, again, <laughs> kind of does not make sense, but, I mean, yeehaw. And... How has that changed? Because, like, who is your target these days? Interestingly enough, the one aspect that hasn't changed is the fact that when you see a bunch of Xenos online and in a system, you will quickly observe that all the trade traffic will Stops. take the longest possible detour it can. But instantly. <laughs> like, the moment a single XA tag is on the server, trade ships will go the opposite direction, even if it's going to take an hour longer. That's not changed. It's changed in terms of methodology, slightly. We will still mostly exempt Liberty Corporations, with exceptions. Now, the exceptions are, if the Libcor in question is carrying guns. If you're carrying guns, we will pirate you for the cargo, because we have cargo piracy lines on even domestic Libcor. Yep. And we'll start off by asking for half guy can barter it down if he wants to maybe throw in a little tidbit about something to do with RP and we'll let him off with slightly less than half. Let's say a quarter or between those two points. If he refuses and tries to do the funny thing of trying to impulse away, we'll start mm -hmm. shooting him. If he then decides to surrender, we will demand all the cargo, every single unit, and we will carry all of it away. That's just how it is. If he refuses past that point, he gets put yeah. on ice permanently. This methodology of cargo piracy carries across factions. Now, there are some factions we believe are like an arch nemesis. So if you see junkers, shoot them on site. There is no cargo piracy. Same thing if you see planet farm, because planet farm is terraforming planet Atka in Hudson for liberty. And the Xenos want Hudson for inexplicable reasons of founding a state there. So, of course, planet form is on the hit list. Everyone else kind of falls under this vague category if, of if you find them with cargo, pirate them for cargo. If they don't comply with you, shoot them. If they then decide to comply, take all their cargo. And if they don't comply after that point, kill them. You don't necessarily have to put foreign transports on ice, but you are encouraged to not wastefully expend ammo killing them. Because this, ah, we've reached, an, that, era, that actually we've reached an era of practicality where the leader of the Xenos as it stands right now, like the Xeno Alliance, not the Xenos, pardon me, has set himself the lofty goal of running this like a militia. And he needs to bankroll this operation carefully because if he doesn't, well, suddenly you can't buy ammo anymore. So his thing is, if a trade ship is carrying nothing, and this is like some 
like Steve from accounting in his Republican shipping transport. There's really no point in blowing him up. You're not going to send a message because nothing's burning. There's nothing in him. And I mean, you don't ships make are expensive. And they that are. ship, that like the fleet, like I, this is this is purely from experience, but I am a sales manager in a stainless steel uh, distributor. Getting wow. uh, like having a car break down, like you know, one of the uh, lorries, like the big cars break down, is potential like thousands upon thousands upon thousands euros lost. Yeah. So maybe you should probably tell Steve from McCalvin to get to that eject pod just in case. <laughs> what will occasionally happen though is that since it's it's not a faction, like he might have this goal of structuring the Xeno Alliance like a militia, but there's no hard and fast rules. So you have this aspect of individual freedom to handle things in the field. So when you're out there and you have this guy under your guns, whether you kill him or not is irrelevant. But it, it's encouraged that you bring something back and you try to go about this productively because yeah. then everyone benefits and you can actually fight these people as opposed to just blowing them up to cost them money. But meanwhile, the guys at home don't make anything because you didn't bring back salvage. Uh, you didn't bring back anything for the guys to eat. You didn't bring, bring back full food, ammo, fuel, nothing. So this actually that's kind of the motivation. This actually kind of neatly uh, spirals into the next point. So, for example, mm -hmm. if someone was uh, going to apply for the Xeno Alliance right now, what yeah. kind of person would this faction be the most suitable for? Like, do you get more shooty shoots or do you get more uh, piracy? Well, <clears throat> piracy. Uh, op opportunistic <laughs> <laughs> salvaging. Uh, like... How how much do you get for like for example piracy for many people especially people who don't do unlawful uh, factions, um, what is the roleplay ratio, like honestly what is the roleplay ratio when you encounter traitors these days, like how big the chances are to get actual roleplay and get a you you know a good encounter instead of just a regular drop your cargo or die. Uh, if I had to put it in a ratio, I would say it's 40-60 with 40% being the chance that you would have like a potentially neat chat with this guy where he goes back and forth with you a few times. And unfortunately, the 60% being this guy is just a headache. He's trying to constantly cruise away and he may or may not spam your PMs afterwards. So that sort of deal. You know, honestly, sick. Like forty percent is a damn high thing <laughs> compared to. Which the, is why like, I've also days. like one of the things I had to consider and why I loosened the, the the extremism of killing every trader I find is because I don't actually want to run out of traders. I realized that if you do actually just nuke these guys day in day out, they're gonna stop yeah. coming here. Like at a certain point, you will win. You'll get exactly what you want, and that's good as a faction. But it kind of sucks when you want to talk to people sometimes. And I've That's managed to fair, justify actually. this as a PR thing. So his idea is that he gets to market the Xenos as being less extreme than the media, you know, portrays them. So he can pull in people that may not necessarily even like them, whether they be as contacts, sympathizers, or even volunteers to directly help. All right. So moving on, since we're nearing the 35 minute mark, uh, yep. What exactly is the current situation with the in-game encounter? So, for example, a player logs in solo, or a player logs in in a group. What kind mm -hmm. of in-game activities does the Xeno ID currently offer? So, I haven't actually did this, but I'm going to scan you. Oh, look, nomads. Uh, terrorists, uh, so, can attack Hagoshan junkers, cannot use cruisers, battleships, etc can attack mm -hmm. any ship except Liberty Corporations and can demand cargo. So, yep. what is, like, you log into the game as a player, a Xeno Alliance member, what yes. can you do? Typically, you can do one of two things. One is that this has actually happened to me very often nowadays, is that you'll meet somebody who is like a freelancer or some independent faction. And as a side note, we're really not hostile to independent factions. So if you're like the IMG 
or like one of these factions that doesn't associate to, with a house, you're going to get left alone, like kind of the same way as the Zoners do. So you'll end up chatting with these people when they pass through the region. Like it can be a freelancer who just is curious what you represent, or it can be one of these independent trade ships that potentially wants to strike a deal with you when you manage to catch somebody with cargo, but don't necessarily have the means to transport it somewhere. Yeah, that's I love profitable. that. So that, I, that's I, I always thing. love like, doing that. This happens quite often now. Like you will, as a Xeno, it's very odd how this has turned out, is that you will have, depending on how you play it out, a lot of potential to talk to people about a variety of things, even if they're hostile. On the flip side to this, one of the like primary activities of the Xenos is that it is just, admittedly, combat faction. There's no way around that. Even if it does have cargo piracy lines, the end game is always terrorism. So you're going to be shooting your lawfuls, shooting the junkers, and shooting other unlawfuls. With the exception of, of course, the outcasts who have decided to actually stop monopolizing cardamine trade with the junkers which has been a catastrophically huge development and that's a freaking twist right there <laughs> yeah you have mentioned I, i'm that dropping earlier. this on you at the end. oh no it does it, make sense actually, though it's so i was, I, I was always wondering like when would this happen like I'll i was reluctant just to take you to ore for this reason because if you go to ore right now and you look underneath it there's an extension which is meant for the outcast to dock on and sell cardamine. What? No. Like, right no, now. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to see this now. <laughs> Go on, though. <laughs> Go on, though. It is a fairly rough little extension. It's due a fix next patch, I think. Where it look much nicer and function a bit differently than this, but you get the idea. So what about diplomacy? Like, are they like neutral no doc or? Yeah, they're a neutral no doc. It's neutral no doc. Uh, or both Zeno, ways. Zeno. Yeah. yeah, it's both ways. And the reason I it had to that. be, it had to be like this, is because otherwise, you would, if you had to make these factions neutral, you would have outcast doc on Ore with caps, and that's yeah, just yeah, obviously that is let's not, not do going that. To. So neutral no doc both ways, and they have an extension IFF to them. And it's a unique IFF. It's not actually the standard Outcast Outcast IFF, so Station! You, oh my god! <laughs> if you came here as a Liberty Rogue and tried to dock on that, it would tell you your paper's no good. Because yeah. that's, like, configured to be the same way as Outcast Guard. That is beautiful. I love that development. So I, puts... See, the thing is, the one of the things that the rogues didn't like about the Orange Treaty and the Outcasts in general was because the mm -hmm. Outcasts were looking at it as a business venture. They had to. They were like a house themselves. And it did not make sense that they would, like, be, honestly just put their livelihood in the hands of just junkers and rogues i always thought when are they going to expand the operation diversify the portfolio yes 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 this yes. happened i think initially like there was a small attempt to being made after the sacking of rochester but of course my character's ambition is sometimes a bit too excessive and he pushed the deal a bit too hard he asked for exclusivity and the outcasts obviously can't agree to yeah, that obviously. because if they agree to that they're stupid and they're not stupid they just end up back in square one with the worst partner like at yeah. the start what he has done over time is that he's been bargained down to competitive status there's no longer a monopoly the junkers don't know this nobody knows this this is completely under the radar it's just a deal between a select negotiator between the outcasts and the xenos and it has remained that way for a few months now, I want to say, unless I'm suddenly lost track of time. And it's essentially accelerated quite a few things. It's made the Xenos <laughs> a credible threat to Liberty, which in the wake of the insurgency being invaded by the Liberty Navy and on its last legs is a potentially useful plot point to think of in the future. Like, will that power vacuum remain a vacuum or will you see a new faction 
take the mantle of being Liberty's new arch nemesis, politically speaking. I I know that this is not exactly how it's supposed to pan out, but I'm just imagining the like redefinition of the um, whole succeeding thing that happened mm -hmm. with uh, Americas, but done in Freelancer as Liberty basically splits off in like a small part just built on Cardamine and Slave. <laughs> <laughs> That'd Obviously, be pretty not messed up. Not exactly the thing that they're looking for, but that that's an idea. Alright, speaking of um, time getting away, it's been like 40 minutes, so let's get ourselves situated with the last things. Is there anything else you want to touch upon? Uh, not quite so sure myself. Uh, I did just drop a bombshell on you, which in fairness I probably should have t spoken about when I was talking about the sacking of Rochester, but if I had to say anything at all, it would be that it's been incredibly fun essentially being able to create a setting. And when you have a backbone of plot that is basically, I want to found a nation, you can do a ton of things with it. And I've had so much fun for about a year now, just basically devising a whole different culture group, which is a fun, that's an endless source of creativity because it's in the timeline as of right now have been hundreds and hundreds of years since the Xenos first started as a terrorist organization. So you'd yeah, imagine that in, the time, that in the time they've spent like this, that they'd have developed something like culture. So I get to write about that. I get to differentiate them from mainstay liberty in all these neat little ways. So the fact that they're decentralized, kind of diasporic in a certain way, you will have conclaves of them who don't necessarily agree on many ways that things are done. I in. abuse the frick out of that with the rogues, by the way. I, I love decentralized. Like, I, I love where a, a station in one system can have, a, like, a microculture of its own, and then you can interact with other guys of the same faction. And I know you as asked if... Karst this. You asked Karst this. I watched the video, and this is proof. I did watch the whole thing. You asked him, <laughs> is his version of ALG a subset of the main corporation, or is it a representative of the whole thing? Now, what I did, and I'm glad I did this, is that when I took Xeno Alliance leadership, I made it a subset. I didn't make it the sole representative of the NPC faction, because it's a huge faction in actuality. Yeah. See, that's the and reason what... I didn't even ask that. Like, yeah. there was a reason why I didn't even ask that. Because, like, and... the the mad goals of a meg megalomaniac would probably be, a, like, a splinter off. Pretty much. So the Alliance is the only entity in the Xenos that manages to maintain a presence across every front that they exist on. So they have quote-unquote offices on every base where you will you can meet with an Alliance representative and become a volunteer, which gives you some perks and benefits, but also some obligations because of course you can't just be given a, a free ride. That is, that's not how this works. So, very yeah. quickly, because we are legitimately running out of time, but I do have sure to ask thing. this the same way that I ask Cars. For example, if you get a player who is really into developing their character and personal roleplay, mm -hmm. how yeah. loose are your personal grip on your faction's uh, roleplay? Like, how, uh, how much of it can he kind of diversify for his own specific needs? So, standing policy is that if you come to us with a, f a character, we're going to respond to that character in character all the time, every time. So it can be anything. You can come to us with like a guy who used to be a cop and we'll respond to that because he used to be a cop. You can come to us as just Jim Bob who wants to do good and you can get in that way. You can have any backstory you want and that character is only ever going to be treated objectively and in character. So it doesn't really matter. You're encouraged to develop your character as and how you see fit and the faction responds to you organically. That was always the goal. And I'm glad it's stayed that way over the years. Nice. All right, Ruby, my boy. It has been an interesting 45 minutes. I think we have- Long time. I think we have a small idea of what the Xenos are because in the way that you explain this, this has so much freaking potential 
that any person who, like, apart from get their, getting their PP kick in, like, if they want to hop in and help you brainstorm something up, holy heck, this is going to be interesting to watch. But apart from that, I have no more questions to you. If you have any messages, <laughs> you can give them to the watchers now. Play characters and not ships. That's the most important thing. That 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 is a good thing. That is a That's very good suggestion. The only advice I'd ever give. All right, ladies and gentle boys, this was a meet of action with the Xeno Alliance and with Reeves. Yours truly, Spazzy, and we will see you in the next one. Cheerios. Cheerios. Say bye. Bye.